Hello insulin users, today we are going to talk about Tandem Control IQ versus Metronic 670G. I am Dr. Ergin, I'm an endocrinologist and I have a huge endocrinologist practice. And we have a lot of patients on these pumps and I consult them every day about the differences and which pump is the best way to go. So if you guys have used insulin pumps before, you will know that uh, there have been a lot of developments in this area. So you may have been using Basal IQ with Tandem, or you may have been using 630G, 640G with Medtronic. Now they had uh, something called a threshold suspend uh, to prevent a low blood sugar. Now we have a closed loop system uh, that actually also help you to prevent high blood sugars. So, as you can see here, Medtronic 670G and Tandem, they have their own sensors uh, for Medtronic and for the Tandem, they are partnering with Dexcom G6. Now, today we are going to summarize important clinical features of these two pumps and that way you can make the best decision. Now, remember, when you get a pump, you're practically stuck with that pump for a long time. So you better like your pump and if you don't it will be difficult or at least costly to upgrade or change your pump to a different brand. Now we are going to summarize today how these pumps really operate and how can it be better for you in terms of different features because they're totally differently engineered. Uh, the purpose is the same however once you hear the differences you will appreciate the benefit of each pump pertinent to you. So the first one is we are going to talk about how these pumps actually suspend the, uh, uh, the insulin delivery when your blood sugar is about to go low. The secondly, we are going to talk about what is modifiable and what is fixed in those insulin pumps. And I'll explain to you what, what I mean by modifiable and fixed. And thirdly, we are going to talk about when does the pump kick you out from the closed loop system? Uh, and then we will talk about what is a closed loop system and open loop system in a, in a, in a minute. Uh, but these are the headlines for you that we will go over. So uh, the, 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 the fourth point, we are going to talk about some educational points that you really need to be aware of uh, when you are wearing those pumps. And that's also true uh, for clinicians who are watching this. Uh, if they are treating patients with insulin pumps. The lastly, we are going to talk about the sensor differences between the Medtronic and Tandem Control IQ. Okay guys, tune in and we will uh, go over one by one. Okay, let's talk about how these pumps really calculate the automated insulin delivery. Now there are major differences guys. Number one, they're both closed loop systems, but how they are different we'll talk about now. So basically what happens is the uh, Medtronic insulin pump uh, adjusts your basal insulin delivery based on the last two to six days. So your um, pump actually learns from the last couple days of uh, your basal insulin delivery and will continue to adjust uh, your basal insulin based on a set threshold uh, threshold of blood sugar. So basically the pump is trying to keep you at 120 blood sugar and it adjusts every five minutes by increasing or decreasing the basal insulin delivery to try to keep you at 120 milligram per deciliter. Um, now, on the other hand, Medtronic pump does not give you an automatic correction bolus. Uh, so as a result, it only adjusts your insulin and your threshold is set at 120. Now, uh, this can be modifiable, which we will talk later. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, patients cannot really uh, manually correct uh, when their blood sugars are high. Um, now let's look at the uh, Tandem insulin pump uh, which uses the Dexcom G6 sensor uh, and normally your doctor, your endocrinologist will set up your pump 
uh, just like they do for the Medtronic one. Um, but uh, pump can also start working immediately if you put your total weight and if you put your total uh, daily insulin use uh, and insulin pump will start from somewhere to start giving you uh, insulin. Now uh, the difference from Medtronic pump is that as you can see on the screen here uh, it maintains or tries to maintain your blood sugar between 112.5 and 160. So as long as your blood sugars are between 112.5 and 160, uh, your pump really does not adjust your already set basal rate. Um, now, uh, of course, both pumps give you uh, insulin based on a predicted blood sugar in the future, not only the blood sugar currently. Uh, so that is the benefit of closed loop systems that, th that when your insulin changes, you actually see the result, you know, uh, later, not immediately. So as a result, uh, making changes for the future blood sugars really make a difference. Uh, now, as we said, the Medtronic pump uh, is set at 120. The um, uh, Tandem pump is set at between 112.5 and 160. And th this is modifiable in certain settings, which we'll talk about. But uh, primarily, if you're using Tandem pump, that's what you're set up. It's what your pump is trying to keep you at between 112 and 160. Uh, now what happens is that there are multiple different layers of uh, blood sugar uh, uh, goals and thresholds here and your tendon pump will uh, act accordingly. So what happens is that if, you, if your tendon pump thinks that your, your blood sugar is going to be less than 112.5 uh, in 30 minutes, it starts reducing your basal dose. Uh, and if it uh, starts going down below 70, if, if it thinks that this, you are going to be below 70 uh, very soon, then it actually totally shuts off your uh, basal insulin. Now, uh, the same thing happens with Medtronic. Uh, and um, with the Medtronic, though, uh, it shuts off basically whatever the low threshold that you set. Uh, Anytime you're 20 above that, as a safety feature, uh, your insulin will uh, go down or will shut off. Uh, and the good thing about Medtronic pump though, uh, if you uh, want to change your, um, your uh, low setting, your low glucose threshold, uh, you can change it anywhere from 50 to 90. Uh, on the other hand, with the tandem pump, uh, it is actually cannot be modifiable and it's only at 70. Um, and Tendon pump predicts, uh, or the Dexcom predicts actually, that you're going to be below 70, um, then your pump will be shut off. Uh, in the Medtronic again, uh, it shuts off when it is 20 above. Uh, so you can actually basically make your pump shut off. Uh, if you set your low threshold all the way up to 90, uh, your pump will actually shut the insulin off at 110. Uh, so you have to be careful about that because if you uh, set that way, uh, you may end up with high blood sugars um, uh, in, in Medtronic pump settings sometimes if you do not set it right. So uh, these are uh, the important features. Now the tandem also will give you um, you know more insulin if you if it predicts that your blood sugar is going to be more than 160 uh, versus that happens with uh, more than 120 with Medtronic pump. So um, so Medtronic pumps tries to keep you at more of a narrow range right around 120. Uh, how successful that is that's that's debatable but uh, the goal in the Medtronic pump is basically your um, your blood sugar to be 120. Now with the uh, uh, tandem pump, unless you're 160, you're not going to get more insulin or predicted blood sugar has to be more than 160. Um, now if you are though, the good thing about tandem pump that is not present in the Medtronic pump is that you actually get a bolus dose if your blood sugar is predicted to be more than 180, uh, which Medtronic pump does not do. Uh, why is it important to get a bolus? Because bolus is, as you can understand from the name, it's a big chunk of insulin that is given to try to bring you down fast. Uh, however, when you do basal adjustments only, uh, the, the reaction is a lot slower. So uh, if you guys are driving German cars, you will, uh, you will see that there, there's a sport mode, sport plus mode. Uh, when you change it, your car suddenly gets the speed. Um, uh, so bolus is like that. When you give the bolus, suddenly your insulin goes up and, and, and then your blood sugar can come down quite fast. 
uh, and most of the time that's what you want. You don't want to stay at 200 for two or three hours before you come down. You want to bring it down very fast uh, without crashing, of course. Uh, so the good thing about these closed loop systems, they can give you a bolus with, with tandem, not with Metronic, but with tandem, you can get a bolus. And if your blood sugar is predicted to go too low, uh, then it's going to shut the insulin off. So it's not necessarily a dangerous thing. And then tandem pumps are uh, designed uh, very carefully uh, considering the safety. Uh, so I think that's a good plus feature that you're getting a bolus if you didn't bolus right. Let's say uh, you uh, gave a bolus for your carbs, which is required for any pump, closed pump, open pump, doesn't matter. Uh, for any system, you still have to give a bolus. Uh, in this case, uh, if you are giving a bolus, but your blood sugar is gonna go to more than 200 anyways, the, the tandem pump will be able to give you that extra push of insulin that will keep you uh, within your goal. All right, so with uh, that being said, we are going to move to the second point, which is what is really modifiable in your pump. So when we talk about what is modifiable, if you know what pumps, and if you guys are uh, really uh, hands-on with your pump, uh, or at least you have an idea about uh, what is an insulin carb ratio, what is sensitivity, what is basal rates, uh, what is active insulin time, uh, you should be able to uh, differentiate. And I will tell you clinical pearls in terms of why uh, these uh, modifiable factors can actually be uh, important. So let's talk about insulin carb ratio. Now that is modifiable in both pumps and I'm glad that is because everybody's insulin sensitivity is different and insulin carb ratio has to be set by the clinician and the patient together. So as a result, I think it's, 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 it's good that both pumps, Medtronic and the Tandem, uh, allows you to modify uh, the insulin carb ratio. Now, when it comes to sensitivity factor, uh, in Medtronic, you cannot really adjust your sensitivity because basically Medtronic pumps are uh, almost using like uh, an artificial intelligence to understand what your sensitivity is uh, to insulin and your basal rates uh, are all uh, not changeable. So sensitivity factor is not changeable with Medtronic versus uh, in a tandem pump that is definitely modifiable. And I think uh, I favor that better so that you have better control. Um, now, basal rates also uh, is not modifiable in Medtronic uh, 670G system. Uh, on the other hand, um, in tandem, uh, that is also modifiable. So your clinician will set your basal rates um, in both systems. Uh, Medtronic will operate in the already present system that is set by your clinician, uh, your endocrinologist, uh, if you're not in the auto mode, which is a closed loop system. Uh, so if you are in the auto mode, on the other hand, the pump will calculate your basal requirement uh, based on the last two to six days of your insulin use. Uh, now, that is not totally um, uh, outside your hand or your clinician's hand because bottom line, it is still using your preset insulin settings. But if, you're in, if your Medtronic pump thinks that your actually basal rate is not enough, uh, based on the sensor readings. For example, you go to bed and your blood sugar is 120 and you end up waking up with 180 blood sugar, then your pump will realize that actually your basal rate is not enough at bedtime. And if it keeps happening every night, then your Medtronic pump will think that you actually need more basal insulin at night. So as a result, when you're in a closed loop system, while monitoring your blood sugars, at the same time, your Medtronic will be able to adjust your basal rates based on on the learned um, basal rates by the pump. Uh, so as a result, um, the pump basically takes full control of your basal insulin delivery with the Medtronic.